Hey, Center Point Community Church, it's good to talk to you today. Now, things are going to be a little bit different today, so I want you to hang on with me and I want you to listen to what's going on, okay? So, we're not actually live right now at, at Soundbridge. You know, I know that's weird. I'm normally telling you, hey, we're showing this. We recorded on Saturday. We're going live at Soundbridge, but we're not live today. Today things are different today things are special today we're doing our baptism weekend so we are we are excited to to be doing some baptisms for uh, we got about half a dozen people that are, are are wanting to be baptized that are that are wanting to share that that public confession of faith in Jesus Christ and we are so excited about it and we are so thrilled but you know, it is September in Connecticut, so we want to make sure we do it in a warmer part of the day. So we're going to be doing it at one o'clock. So anybody that's watching us online right now, I want you to know this sermon's going to be a little bit shorter. It's going to be succinct. It's going to be to the point because we're going to be posting another one this evening. Now, Normally, I want to send you to the YouTube page. I want you to watch YouTube. I want you to like, share, and do all that stuff. You know, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, do all those sort of things that are here on YouTube. But we're going to be going on Facebook Live for the baptism service at one o'clock. So if you want to check out our page at one o'clock on Facebook, it may be on Kim's, but we'll make sure we link it over to the center point page, but look for Kim, look for myself and, um, and look for center point and find that, find that baptism going on live on on Facebook all right so you can follow that and then we're also going to record it so we'll have the camera out there we'll record it and we'll bring that home we'll post that um, that service so that you can watch it and so you can celebrate the baptisms that are going to be going on this Sunday so that's a lot of stuff going on we're so excited about it all right lots of great stuff is going on for Center Point it's great to see God moving in people's lives and people coming to know him better so that being said this sermon's going to be a little shorter it's going to be be more of a devotional length sermon because it really is setting up what's going on for our sermon tonight and I want you I really want you to go and watch that sermon watch it live make sure you like it and share it and then go ahead and and come back to the YouTube and like and, and share and even put a comment on the YouTube page for us um, when we post it there on YouTube so that YouTube knows it's an important thing for us so that we're excited about getting people engaged and seeing those baptisms going share that video and let people know all right well, I just want to encourage you to keep praying for what God's doing in the church. I, I do have a, a prayer prayer concern for you or, or prayer need. We've been praying for um, uh, for Carmela and just keep praying for Carmela and lift her up. You know, Bob's funeral was this week, and and I just want to thank Pastor Chris for going and 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 being there for the family and taking care of that. And we're just so blessed to have um, some godly people around us that can do those sorts of things. And so we are just excited um, to 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 know that we've got so many great people around us that are doing the work of God. So do keep praying for Carmela, lift her up, and I know that um, one day soon she'll be able to come and join us again, and we look forward to that day. So I want to open us up in a word of prayer, and we are just going to jump in. We're going to get started, and we're going to move. All right. Our Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this day today. God, thank you so much for the opportunity we're going to have today to see see so many people baptized, Lord. God, I pray that you would help this to be a celebration beyond all celebrations and Lord that we would that we would truly appreciate God what you have done for us, Lord, in our lives, Lord, in the lives of our church, Lord, that we would be um, God, we would be passionate about who you are in our lives. Lord, I pray that you would continue to lift us up, Lord, and encourage us in the days to come. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, people. So um, we're going to be talking about baptism today. Now, if, if you didn't go and watch our video that we posted on baptism, I want to encourage you to go and find that video and watch that video on baptism because we talk about a lot of stuff that goes on, why we do baptism, kind of the nature of of the way that we do baptism. And I think a lot of us have grown up in different different faith backgrounds and in different ways. Some of us were, were baptized as infants. Some of us were sprinkled or other things that were going on. And, and then you come and look at us Baptists and you're like, what in the world's going on? You guys are getting into a, a pool and you're dunking people underwater and, and, and you're you're coming up, you know, excited and happy and 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 high fiving people and 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 all that stuff. What's going on with that? 
And, you know, baptism has been used for generations. I mean, baptism was used before, you know, Jesus died and was buried and rose again. And so even though we talk about baptism being that representation, it was even going on before then. Jesus and his disciples did baptisms um, while they were walking around. Now, the Bible says that that Jesus' disciples did the baptism, baptizing, not Jesus himself. But through that process, it was it was something that they did. And so I wanted to go back to those early stories of baptism. And I want us to look at a guy that you often often hear called as John the Baptist or John the Baptizer. Because um, there's this there's this guy in the Bible and his thing is baptizing. It's what we know uh, about him for the most part. It's it's like his last name. And, and so I want to read his story. And a great place to find his story is in Matthew chapter 3. And in Matthew chapter 3, we're going to read really this whole chapter just to kind of get an impression of what's going on here. So Matthew chapter 3, verse 1, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Now, I'm preaching out of the CSB version, which is the um, the Christian Standard Bible, and it really does a great job of trying to give us exactly what the Bible is saying in a way that we can understand. Now, normally, you guys know I preach out of the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation is designed to be eminently understandable that you can read it you can hear it and you're like ah that makes sense to me but part of that making sense like any translation in any language is sometimes you sacrifice the the actual words that are going on for the ability to understand the context of what's going on to understand the meaning of what's going on and so for this passage I'm going back to the CSB because I want us to to be able to see clearly some specific words that are in scripture that are that are being given to us that in the new living translation while they translate them well I don't think they give us the same impression so if you're reading along with me and you're like my bible doesn't match today that's why you don't match today okay so verse two it says and saying so this is John the Baptist. He's preaching in the wilderness and he's saying, repent because the kingdom of heaven has come near. For he is the one spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, who said a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. This is John. So Isaiah has prophesied about John. And now John, he had a camel hair garment with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then people from Jerusalem and all Judea and all the vicinity of the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. So I want you to see something very specific here. John is out there preaching repentance. John is out there, you know, basically telling people, hey, you, you got to repent. You got to you got to stop doing evil. You got to stop. You know, the kingdom of God is near and people were being baptized and confessed their sins. They were confessing their sins as they were baptized. Now, the baptizing doesn't get rid of the sins, but the baptism was part of that ritual of as I confess my sins, the things that I've done wrong when I I'm being baptized, I am I am showing that symbol of my confession of my sins. I'm getting rid of the stains in my life. And for Jews, this was a big deal because most of them thought that their confessions and their coming to God had to happen at the temple. Sacrifices had to be made. But here John's just saying, declare these things to God, confess your sins and be baptized. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of viper who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Therefore, produce fruit consistent with repentance. And don't presume to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you that God is able to raise up children for Abraham from these stones. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. And that's going to be a really important illustration we're going to see here in a little bit. But John is trying to give even these Pharisees, these religious leaders, this understanding that they are going to be judged. Their repentance is going to be conditioned on do they begin to show the good fruit? 
Do they begin to show the good fruit? And I don't know about a lot of these Sadducees and Pharisees and these religious people, and maybe they were, you know, fine, decent people. You notice this passage doesn't say God's going to tear you down if you produce bad fruit. If you're rotten, if you're bad, God's going to tear you down. He says he's going to tear you down. The axe is near if you're not producing good fruit. So if you were a neutral tree, if you were a tree that, I mean, it wasn't a bad tree, it's just not a good tree. I mean, you're in danger of the axe coming down. He's saying, show me what you're doing. Show me you, the repentance of your life. Turn it around. I baptize you. Here's John again saying, I baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is more powerful than me. And I am not worthy to remove his sandals. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And I think this is really interesting. So I want you to see that that John clearly puts here, I'm baptizing with water for people just to repent, you know, to come and just to confess their sins, say I've done something wrong. Um, everybody needs repentance. Every society has repentance. I mean, even if you're the biggest atheist in the world, part of our judicial system is, is designed for rehabilitation to get you to the point where you say, you know, I've done something wrong for society to society and I need to make amends. And, and, and we make amends. And, and so even secular people are searching out this. And so John is, is doing that activity, trying to get people to turn and be better individuals, be better people. But he says, wait, there is someone who's coming, whose very sandals I'm not even worthy to untie. And he's going to baptize you with spirit and and fire. Now I find this interesting. I, I always think about spirit and fire, spirit and fire. And and I used to connect the two of those, but I, I think some, maybe I don't connect them as much anymore. I want you to look at this. It says his winnowing shovel is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with fire that never goes out. And so here we see that fire image again. And so I want you to think this says his winnowing shovel is in his hand. So they would gather the wheat and they would get these, these baskets or shovels or other things that they could, they could throw the wheat up in the air and they would break it up and the wheat would come out and the chaff would be left, the husk from around the wheat would be left and it says that the that the chaff is going to be burned with fire and so maybe when jesus is saying here or when john is saying jesus is going to baptize with spirit and fire maybe what he's saying is there's going to be two baptisms there's going to be a baptism of the spirit for those that are that are the wheat and there's going to be a baptism with fire for those who are the chaff there's going to be those who are united with Christ. And because we're united with Christ, we're going to celebrate a baptism to show our uniting with Christ. And there are going to be others, instead of being baptized in a lake or in the water, are going to be immersed in the lake of fire because they have rejected Christ. And so I don't want us to be the people that reject Christ. I want us to be people that follow him. But um, but I just it's interesting to see that image and that word fire come up. This is the third time that word fire has come up. And so I have to believe that's important for what he's saying. And so here we get to Jesus himself. It says, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. But John tried to stop him saying, I need to be baptized by you. You, and yet you come to me. And this is the, the verse that I wanted us really to be in the CSB to read. It says, Jesus answered him, allow it for now, because this is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John allowed him to be baptized. And when Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water and the heaven suddenly opened for him. And as he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased.
So let's back up just a little bit where where Jesus comes down. And now you got to understand, John knows who Jesus is. Now, I don't know if John fully understands that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the son of God. But you remember, you go back to the, the Christmas stories and stuff when 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 Mary and a lot of, you know, the Mar- Mary's Magnificat and 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 we know the song that she sings and, and, and all that stuff that goes with it. And she does that at her her cousin Elizabeth's house because Elizabeth. Elizabeth is pregnant and she's pregnant with John the Baptist. That's who she's pregnant with. And so, so John is just a little bit older than Jesus. So the, 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 both the women were pregnant at the same time, but John was probably about six months older than Jesus. And, and so, so John, John was born first and, and he would have been born in that family, knowing and understanding, um, kind of this relationship, maybe being told about who, who he was, uh, told he was going to be by the angels. Maybe he heard the story that his dad told about how an angel came and spoke to him and said, you're going to be, you're going to be bearing a son and name him John. And, and he didn't believe leave and he was struck moot until um, until the baby was born M- maybe he grew up with the stories maybe when Jesus and his family traveled to the temple to celebrate and we know at 12 years old Jesus was teaching in the temple maybe John was a part of that trip maybe John was doing that because the families would travel together and so perhaps when Mary and Joseph weren't r- worried because they couldn't find him they're like ah he's probably playing with his cousin John he's hanging out with him and so who knows what that relationship was but you know that john john had to have known who jesus was and at this moment the spirit is upon john and john realizes not who he physically is not not that he's a is a cousin or something but he realizes this is the son of god and John says, I need to be baptized by you. Remember, John is baptizing, they, they call it a baptism of repentance. Repent. Well, what, what did Jesus need that baptism for? He, he had nothing to repent of. Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus never sinned. So why would Jesus need to repent? He wouldn't need to repent. He, he, he was the son of God. He was the perfect sacrifice, the, the unblemished lamb. And, and John recognizing that says, no, 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 no. I, I should be baptized by you, not you by me. And Jesus answers, allow it for now. Because this is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. You see, I think there's something significant about our baptism. It doesn't save us. I mean, obviously, if baptism was for saving, Jesus never needed it. And the thief on the cross, who obviously got saved after a long, horrible life that he lived, was never baptized. And so he didn't need it to be saved. And so the thief didn't need it to be saved and didn't get it, but got salvation anyways. And Jesus didn't need repentance, didn't need salvation, yet he was baptized in order to fulfill all righteousness. And so that's that phrase, fulfill all righteousness, that the New Living Translation makes it sound nicer, but maybe we missed the thrust of what it's saying. Why was Jesus baptized? Why did Jesus go through something you and I do to show to show our un- union with him? Well, you know, John was calling people to be right with God. And 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 there were many people that as they came and as they confessed and as they got right with God, the world saw the world knew that there was something different about these people that were repenting because John was preaching, not just, don't just say words, but change your actions. And for Jesus to come and say, I am united with that. I'm connected with that. People that are going to have lives of action that are, that are radically different, that are, that are committed completely to God. That's what I want. I want to be um, a demonstrating that. I want to fulfill the righteousness, fulfill the message that you're saying, because the prophecy said from from generations long ago that he would be one calling in the wilderness, crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. And Jesus likes you prepared the way. So let's finish it. Let's demonstrate to everybody 
that you are being obedient to your father and following through in this in this plan that he has and you know we're going to talk about this a lot in the church service this afternoon but you know that's what baptism is that chance that opportunity that privilege to be obedient to God for the very first time. To be obedient to Him in a way that we've never been obedient to Him before. He's become our Lord. And, and He asks us to do this one thing. I mean, think about it in medieval times. When, when, you, make, when you make somebody your Lord, your liege, your king... Your reaction isn't to jump up and say, all right, well, now I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Or it isn't to, to say, hey, I, I got this great challenge. I'm going to go do this challenge. No, the first thing that you would do is you would get down on your knees. And the king would take his sword and he would place it on your shoulders and he would knight you. You were obedient in that very first moment. You're my liege, you're my lord, you're my king, and so there's so many things that I want to do for you, but the first thing is to be obedient in the first thing. To follow through in believer's baptism. To come down to the water's edge and say, I'm willing to give up all of me. I've already repented of my sin. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. We need that confession of sin. We've already done the confession. We've already received the salvation because it is, it is what Christ did on the cross that brings us salvation, not what we do in a, in a body of water. But the body of water becomes the fulfillment, just like John was talking about. Don't just hear the words. Don't just say the words. But let somebody see your actions. Let somebody see you doing something in obedience to Jesus Christ. And when you do that first act of obedience, when you do that first act, of trusting in him and the world knows well God knows that the world knows and God is gonna want you to be the best that you can be God is there for you Jesus says I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly he didn't say I've come that you might be embarrassed around people and those are gonna look at you and it's gonna be rough and tough no Life and life abundantly. That's what he wants for you. That's what I want you to experience from Christ. And so, while we're doing the baptism today, this will not be the last time we do a baptism. And maybe you're not doing it today because you're not quite sure if you're ready. Let me ask you, are you ready for Jesus to be your Lord? And if you're ready for Jesus to be your Lord then are you ready to obey him in that first act of obedience? I hope that you are. It changed my life, and I know that it'll change yours. I want to encourage you to come back at 1 o'clock on our Facebook page, and then, you know, we'll do the whole service, and then I'll have to come home, and because we're not doing it live on YouTube, I'll have to, to update the video and stuff, but we will have it on YouTube by the end of the evening. So you can watch it on YouTube, but you can watch it on Facebook. I want to encourage you to celebrate. Make sure you're putting comments every time you see somebody go under the water and being baptized and following through. They can't hear you, but they can see your words if you're celebrating with them by typing it there on the page and letting them know how excited you are. Let them know that you're excited, that you're following through in faith with what God's doing. God bless you all. I'm going to pray for you, our Heavenly Father. God, I pray that you be with those that are being baptized today, that they might begin their journey of faithfully following you, Lord, with this one act of obedience. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to celebrate them and God to embolden those that, that are still struggling with that, that relationship in their life. And God, I pray that you would. 
I pray that you would inspire us to be closer to you, Lord. God, we love you so much. And Lord, we're so excited about what you're doing in the life of Center Point. And I pray that you would continue to move in Center Point. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. I'm so glad that you are here to celebrate with us. I'm so glad you are here to, to worship with us. I want you to be a part of everything that we're doing at Center Point, And I want you to follow all the things that are going to be going on on our page. So here's some ways that you could do it. You can subscribe to our page right over here. You can watch one of these videos that we've got going on. We've got a video about tithing. If you want to tithe um, online, do all those things. Like and share. We'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.